Hello again. Um, this time what I'm actually going to do is, is another uh, artist who is probably even more important to me than, than uh, Corbet. Corbet, I enjoy that particular painting that I spoke on, is, is a favorite of mine, but Sir William Orpen uh, has probably influenced my work more than uh, many, many other painters, uh, with the exception of, of maybe a few of the contemporary and, and a few of your, your classic guys. But uh, anyway, so William Morpin, he's, a, he's an Irish painter uh, around the turn of the century, uh, 19th, 20th century. Uh, he's actually born uh, a year after Corbet dies in exile, so 1878, and he is a um, portrait painter. Uh, he, he did other things, but his, his claim to fame is, is portrait painting, and and he does this for the British Army during World War I. He, he is actually in the field. He's in France uh, much longer than any other uh, portrait painter is allowed to be, and, and he does so much work. Um, and, and really actually gets gets kind of the short end of the of the deal, uh, but you can you can look him up. Uh, I, I swore I would would not talk so much about the artist and a little bit more about the painting. So with that being said, let me let me go ahead and hop to that. Right. So Sir William Orpin, he this painting is done in 1919. This is Charles Harding. First Baron Harding of Penshurst. That is the name of the painting. It's the title of the painting. It's a portrait. It is 25 by 20, and uh, this is oil uh, done, done on the fly. He's more of a politician than he is the the field general and the captains and and admirals and all the other people that that he painted. But he kept to this almost finished, unfinished type kind of 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 way of painting so he has this beautifully rendered face and as it gets it gets away from that like his, his backgrounds are rushed and uh, you know the bodies are unfinished you're seeing raw canvas in there and when he's doing his war portraits this really speaks to the immediacy and the speed of, of when he had to paint you know you know they sit down he, he's knocking out these paintings and he, he renders them beautifully but you get enough of the form uh, to let your mind go ahead and finish out the rest of it, uh, but what you know, you're still getting the the lines uh, directional, but but it's more in a natural way, not necessarily in his uh, the best way I can can maybe say it is this is also maybe centered like that Corbet, like we talked about. It, he's not looking at necessarily trying to talk to you or speak to you in a subconscious way necessarily uh, or at least not intentionally so <laughs> uh, but what he's doing is rendering a portrait but it's in it has such an immediacy and an urgent uh, feel to it and you know he he sticks to these rather muted earth tones um, and everything has this very aged look to it even at, at the time that he was doing it uh, it, it looked like it had uh, been around for a while, you know, it had, it had aged, it had yellowed, um, but uh, this this particular uh, painting itself is uh, uh, Charles Harding, the, the Baron, Baron Harding of Pincers, uh, you know, you, you got to look at, this is during the time of colonialism, uh, you know, towards the tail end, where there's still, you know, uh, like this fellow here is the Viceroy, um, you know of, of his majesty to India and and you know since World War one uh, it, it's just the timing of it to me seems so ahead you know it's so ahead of it this this finished unfinished push and pull of the figure ground um, you know leaving these unpainted strokes or excuse me these these unpainted areas that are uh, you know bisected and trisected and and just these thrusts of of, of a paint line, you know, which are very consciously vertical in the background or, you know, the shape of the shoulder that comes down. So, I mean, there's, there's almost like a, a I would finish it, but I don't need to, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful way to engage 
someone and and the viewer and break down the barrier of the the static boring portrait uh and and he did not really get a lot of his due uh until probably the 1980s i want to say um, where he, he was kind of had this resurgence of people looking at his work in a, in a different way, you know, I guess postmodern, you know, getting getting past that. Um, but if you look at this, I mean, he's taking the stylings and the trappings of the day and age, um, and he's capturing these, uh, you know, I mean, phenomenal renderings of, of skin and quality of light and color. Uh, which to me really is what sets apart a you know painting the 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 skin and, and a person and the figure, uh, you know it's just the the quality of light and color that you can put into the skin, but then he's he's taking it and putting it in his or speaking in his own language in a way that was uh, out of out of sense of um, necessity and that urgency that I spoke of earlier, uh, which to me really is just puts this guy you know light almost light years ahead um, you know because when you go and look at, at guys like Kent Williams and some of these other people that have deconstructed the human form and and left all this raw canvas uh, or not you know just just breaking things down and um, you know beyond abstraction but into using a, a raw canvas or using a neutral uh, ground to almost uh, move you away from the realism that had been so prevalent up until that point, uh, you know, you're looking at getting getting into uh, just the tail end of the Edwardian and Victorian ages, and and you know, people that are really pushing away from that real realism, uh, but yet still having one foot firmly planted in it. Uh, Right, so that that's a little bit more of my take on Orpen's um, first Baron Harding of Pinshurst, Charles Harding, um, and, and that portrait. I uh, I know I've picked two very centrally located paintings, like with a lot of focal point. But what I found so interesting about those two, with with Corbet and Orpen, is that everything you know revolves around it. Whether it's you know, or you know. Um, you know that guy, or, or the uh, uh, the Baron here, who's looking like this. But uh, there's so much going on around him, and the actual actions of mark making, which uh, seems to be uh, to really what keeps painting alive, and what has kept painting uh, valid in in the the face of photography and whatnot over the years. Uh, is that is so pleasing to the eye when things like this happen um, that it's very much a painting he's not he's he's showing you that yes you know what I can paint in this uh, you know almost uh, this realist manner and and have these really wonderfully rendered images of this face but I'm also very aware that this is a painting it here's the raw canvas here are my marks this is how I do it uh, which to me is so exciting and and I think that is really truly how uh, Orpen kind of won me over was his complete and total acceptance of, of mark making. Thanks.